I was feeling like I was going to die soon and I wasn't ready to die soon. So I was grappling with that, with God. And I remember being on the phone with my dad and I was sobbing because I was fearful that I wasn't going to get to raise my children. And that's always been, honestly, my biggest fear is that I wouldn't be there for them. And as I was crying to my dad on the phone, I heard God's voice tell me that I was going to be okay, that I was not dying. Enter the world of magic mushrooms with microdose you. So I've got Grace Rizza with us today, mom and business owner. Welcome, Grace. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's really good to have you after so many years. Um, so you've got a story. And why don't we just start with you simply telling your story? Okay. Well, sounds good. And I know that your following is very interested in, in health. And I'm going to keep it focused there. I've always had pain. I have always had pain. I have had pain as far back as I can remember. Primarily back pain was the first uh, thing that I could remember. And I was a teenager working my first job at Lifetime Fitness. Actually, it wasn't my first job, but it was one of my first jobs. And I, I used to um, clean poop and fold towels. And I was like, kind of like a custodian type person. And I just remember standing and folding towels and being like, I can't stand. And it wasn't even for very long. I'd be standing for like an hour and, and just have like serious back pain. So I, I thought that was normal because my whole life I had pain. And I think a lot of people um, that have chronic pain don't even give it attention because you don't have anything to compare your body to. Like we've only lived in our, in our own body. Um, so as I got older and got into adulthood, um, I had all these other symptoms that would start to come up like, um, different skin rashes, uh, when I was in the sun or Raynaud's phenomenon where I'd lose, um, like color in my fingers a little bit. I feel this very specific tingling sensation, um, a lot of fatigue, um, and just, it just progressively got worse throughout my life where I just felt unwell, um, didn't stop me. I'm a very hard worker. I, I kind of am mentally strong. So I would just push through, push through whatever life was throwing at me. But that was, that was a lot of my early, uh, years was just pain. So yeah. Um, I had really difficult pregnancies. I had really difficult like menstrual cycles, very, very high pain, uh, very sensitive to like surgeries, staples, medicine, just extremely, extremely sensitive. Um, and I remember a, it kind of, things kind of came to a, to a head, I'd say a few years ago, I had a, had to take a course of antibiotic for an infection and I had a, a total lupus flare. So I'm diagnosed Hashimoto's and I have a lot of symptoms and I've tested positive for lupus. I've tested positive for, um, like on blood work for polymyositis and like a lot of autoimmune conditions tend to be like, um, in alignment with my symptoms and my blood work, but only official diagnosis of Hashimoto's. And so, um, after I had been on this course of antibiotics, I actually only took one or two of the pills because I realized if I take this third pill, I'm, I might die because my organs were just, I felt like it felt to me like someone was like, my organs were being squeezed. That's the type of pain it was. It was like my organs were being squeezed. Um, and when you think about health, I think a lot of people think about their physical health, but there's also an emotional health and there's also a spiritual health and they're all, I believe they're all connected. And so when you're in physical pain and when you don't feel healthy physically, 
you start to worry and it starts to affect your emotional health. Um, it starts to affect your mental health and it starts to affect your spiritual health. And it, and, and it has this kind of like ripple effect. So um, at that point, when I was like, okay, my, my, my joint pain was really bad. Muscle pain was really bad. Um, and I thought I was living fairly healthy. I mean, I'm to a doctor, I look healthy. So no one would take me seriously because it's like, yeah, no, you're, you know, getting older now. So now I can get taken seriously. But when I was in my twenties, you know, forget about it. So, um, at that stage, I actually went, I had blood work queued up for, for lupus and these ANA panels. And after I took the antibiotic, I, and I had the worst flare I've ever had. That's when I did my blood work because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted the blood work to represent what I felt like at my worst, not these random tests that don't show you anything when you're feeling at your best. So I had that to compare it to. And boy, is there a, a huge discrepancy between blood work when you're feeling your best and when you're feeling your worst. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. Grace. So um, yeah. Back, back up for one second. Um, let's, let's put a bookmark in the blood work. Cause I want to get back to that in just a second. However, mm -hmm. um, when you said like, you know, and I, I always, I always tell my um, followers on my show that, everything is connected. You can't just look at mental health separately, physical health separately. You know, you mentioned spirituality also. So when you were in all this pain and had these things going on, tell us a little bit about your, your mental health. How did you feel uh, in that regard? And also you could, if you want to mention your spirituality back then, were you, were you spiritual? How are you feeling in, in that regard? And then we can move on and to the blood work back again. Yeah. So, um, and I'm kind of covering many years condensed into, you know, a quick talk. Um, I have always felt spiritual, but I have not always been confident in my faith. And so this is at this time that this is also, that this is going on. I am also on this faith journey. Um, I am Catholic. I have, I have landed on Catholicism after a great deal of, uh, of research. And, um, and at this point that I'm talking about, when I had this really bad flare up a few years back, I'm very strong in my faith. And so I was feeling like I was going to die soon and I wasn't ready to die soon. So I was grappling with that, with God. And I remember being on the phone with my dad and I was sobbing because I was fearful that I wasn't going to get to raise my children. And that's always been honestly, my biggest fear is that I wouldn't be there for them. And as I was crying to my dad on the phone, I heard God's voice tell me that I was going to be okay, that I was not dying. I was literally mid-sob, like, Dad, <laughs> I tested positive for polymyositis. I have so much pain. I, I looked up the life expectancy. Six years barely gets me through their teenage, doesn't even get me through their teenage years. I was, and then I went, never mind. <laughs> mid sentence to my father i was like never mind i'm good i'll be okay and he's like you know what i was god just told me i'd be okay and and that was the turning point for me is i i felt i felt god's voice tell me that this is not um my time and that i was going to be okay and then my mental everything on on a dime had had shifted to hope yeah was was that the first time in your life you ever experienced um the hearing, voice of hearing, god yes yes no i did um a few times um one time very clearly i was and this is before i was converted to catholicism and fully in my faith i was up at 3 a.m. crying out to god what happened was one of my employees made a mistake 
that cost my cl- one of my clients $17,000 and I learned about it and I w- and and this is one of my closest you know clients and I knew he was going to be so disappointed in me and I I felt so horrible about the mistake and and I was like God I was having a conversation really a monologue with God telling God pleading with God like to handle it for me basically and I was like I don't know what to do if I tell him he's never going to trust me again, I feel so bad. Maybe I could just put more into his campaign to make up the money. And I heard God tell me, you know what to do. And I felt peace and I felt, okay, I'll call him first thing in the morning. I'll tell him exactly what happened. I will write him a check. I will make it right. God intervened and was like, don't give me these excuses. You know what to do. And so, no, I've, there've been a couple moments like that where, where I've heard God intervene in my life. That was one, that 3am sob session was one. I've had a few, um, but it's not constant. I'm not like some big prophet or something. I've just had a couple moments where I've heard God speak. Yeah. Did it come across more as, as as a feeling or or did you hear did you hear an actual like audible voice? So I have heard my name called an audible voice once wake me up by name that I feel like was God. Um, but no, it's an internal um, like I could think in my head in words. It's it was like an internal message. It wasn't an audible voice. So, but very clear, um, very direct and very much, very much God. So I knew in that moment, I had total certainty that I wasn't dying and that, um, that really changed my perspective from, from begging and pleading with God to, okay, then show me then bring me the information that I need to get well so that I can serve you. And that, and that kind of led, that led my path. So. Well, that's, that's really an amazing story. So um, if you want to go ahead and continue, I know I, I, I kind of diverted the conversation a little bit to ask you about spiritual and mental your feelings, but um, you, you were talking, you were talking about getting the results back from your blood test. I believe yes, you're yes. going, going through a, a tough time. Yes. So like shortly after that, I had this very strange YouTube video like pop up in my feed, not related to anything that I had been searching. And it was a a really, this guy is out there. I mean, he's out there. I don't remember his name exactly, but it was a video of a guy who was talking about meat and eating meat and how healthy it is. And so my first real major shift in my diet was to try the carnivore diet. I just started eating meat and I was, I never liked meat. It kind of like grosses me out a little bit. I think about the animals. I have this emotional reaction to it. I think like a lot of people, but I was like, well, what do I have to lose? Like, I'll try it, you know? And that was a big shift for me because then I got, then my feed, my algorithm started changing and I started getting more content um, in alignment with this. So I actually went strict carnivore for eight months and all I ate for the most part, I mean, I'm not perfect, but for the most part, all I ate was uh, meat and I ate dairy, I ate too much dairy and I ate blueberries. I never cut out blueberries. Um but it was pretty much like a pretty extreme elimination diet. And that was tough. That was really tough. Were you eating any carbs in any way at all? In the dairy, I would get some carbs. Um, and when I was going through this shift, because when you go from a carb-based diet to a ketosis state, it's a major shift. I say it's like switching from like a windows computer to a Mac. It's just like a totally different, uh, operating system. So there's a learning curve and your energy is different. 
And sometimes you don't realize that you're hungry. You will get a headache instead of the hunger si signals like crashing. If you realize, oh, wait, I haven't eaten. Um, I have a headache. I need to eat. It's just very different. It's a very, very different day-to-day -day feeling. Um, it's hard to explain really, but there's a transition there too that happens. And I'm just, I'm just really curious. So when you went on the carnivore diet, um, tell us just briefly, uh, you were eating mm -hmm. meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like meat all day long. Like what would be a typical, what would be a, like a typical breakfast you would eat? Eggs, beef. If I wanted beef, um, at the time I was eating bacon, bacon's a big, pork's a big question mark for me right now. I don't really know if, what, how I feel about pork right now, but why Any kind of meat. Why? I don't know. I'm just, I just question everything all the time. So, um, but yeah, meat, eggs, cheese. I would eat, I ate too much cheese. Um, and I didn't drink enough water and I didn't get enough electrolytes. I did it all wrong. And I went cold turkey, no carbs. So they talk about like keto flu and stuff. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. I didn't feel good right away. I didn't just, oh, I'm better. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. So, so, but then what? Oh, then I, then I had a lot of energy. I had a, I did have a hard time sleeping. Um, I personally feel like I do better with some carbs. I, I am not strict carnivore, um, now, but if I have a health flare up and I need to heal my gut, it's I'm right back. I'm right back because I do feel like I did a lot of gut healing. I had a lot of digest digestive issues where I was sick all the time. Every meal I'd have a stomach ache. I was sick all the time. Um, and I do think permeable gut is very deeply connected to autoimmune conditions. And that if you heal the gut, everything else follows, everything else heals. And I do think that that eight months on carnivore, even though it was very challenging, I think I did a lot of healing in that in that period, which allowed me then to reintroduce different foods and have some variety and enjoy enjoy meals a little bit, you know. So I, I don't think it has to be the forever way of life, but I do think it's the healthiest with with um, with what I know um now so but i don't think it's realistic so for a lot of people why would you say that if it's if it's truly healthier why why wouldn't it be realistic for more people because you miss food like food's an experience you know like 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 a it it there's a, I feel like there's a blessing of like joy. Like you, you read the Bible and you, you, you read about sharing bread and you like, I, I don't feel like, like the food is inherently bad. I feel like how the food is being produced and manufactured is bad. So I've found things like real sourdough bread, if I have a slice of bread that's, you know, made a certain way with organic ingredients and, I'll put some once in a while, like I'll have that. And, and it, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to hurt me once in a while to have certain things, but I, I, I know for me, I can't just eat whatever's at the store. I can't just go and and pick what looks good or I'll be back in that state of extreme pain and, and sickness. So would you say when you, did the keto, I'm not, uh, well, the carnivore, I'm sorry, carnivore diet for about eight months or so, you, you, you felt noticeably better. I'm assuming, I don't, I mean, I shouldn't assume you had, maybe you had some blood work at that time and the blood work was better as well. Oh, oh, I felt way better. Oh, I have to tell you, I'm so glad you asked that. I felt much better. My, I've never had clear skin in my life. I have always had breakouts. I have always had like, you know, I look better. I, I dropped some excess weight. I lost cellulite. I had more energy. Um, sleep was hard. Electrolytes and hydration was hard. So I, I 
am not diligent enough with drinking water where I can be strict carnivore until I fix that. But a lot of things got better. And my doctor, who's no longer my doctor, told me that I was probably going to drop dead tomorrow from a heart attack if I don't go on a statin because my um, cholesterol was high. Well, I said, well, do a calcium, you know, score. Tell me what, you know, let's look at my arteries and see what my score is. And he was like, oh, we don't do that. We just put you on a statin. It's proven. It's this, it's that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, why is he pushing? And, and, and mind you, he was 50 pounds overweight. I'm taking medical advice from him. I'm looking at him like, okay, no, this isn't going to happen. So I, I found another doctor who agreed to do the, you know, calcium. I don't remember what the name of it is. Oh, do the score. Calcium score. Yeah. Calcium score. Yeah. The calcium score. And it was zero, zero. So I'm like, no, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm good. Um, but yeah, a lot of things improved for me. Um, gut health, energy, body, like physique, skin, cellulite, like a lot of things got better. A couple things got worse that I had to figure out. What got worse? Um, the muscle pain, muscle pain got worse. I had to go through that keto flu thing. Um, and then it kind of just opened this door to this journey that I went on and I've been doing different things for my health ever since. So to give you kind of a little bit of a rundown, um, I tried drinking raw milk, which is like, you're not supposed to do it's illegal. It's you cannot drink raw. Like apparently that's just more dangerous than like street drugs. Like you know, the way um, they have it. I was, like, I was just talking to somebody about the, that the other day we were on a little camping trip down in Southern Utah through like an area where there's a lot of, um, FLDS, like fundamental Latter-day Saints. And then we saw a sign on somewhere for like um raw, you know, raw unpasteurized milk. And the people we were with said, Isn't is that okay to drink? Is that is that even legal? Can you sell that? I said, Well, I said, I, I think some people believe it's healthier. I don't know the answer to that, but some people believe I love it. I is think it it's healthier. Yeah. Really? I buy one that says for pet consumption only. So I'm eating the pet food. Um, but yes, you it, it can be hard to get, but from what I've read, when you pasteurize the dairy, it removes certain enzymes that are utilized to break down and, and utilize what's in the dairy that's good for you. So I don't I don't know. I'm not like I don't chug glasses of straight milk, but I'll like drink a latte or something. And I I like to have the option of, of some dairy and seem good. Um, I started drinking like detoxifying organic herbal teas. So trying to support my liver and kidneys and detox pathways. And I think that that I'm, I'm, I love herbal teas. Um, and I also have done parasite cleanses the kind that you buy like these little tinctures and you do these different protocols. And I did the eight step ones and I did some cheap ones I bought on Amazon. And then I also did pharmaceutical, just fenbendazole. I don't even know the names of the things I've done. Uh, ivermectin and fenbendazole or something. I've done that. Um, and I think everyone should do parasite treatments. That's just my own personal thoughts. We might have to bring you back and, and do an episode because I think it's beyond the scope of today's episode to actually talk about how to do it. But that's an interesting thing that we'll we'll maybe come back to and talk more about. Yeah, that if, if that's yeah. I've got a lot of things we could come back to. Sure. Um, I did a like mycotoxin urine test, which showed me a lot of things. And, and that really reinforced the detoxifying importance of detoxifying and uh, cleansing. And then um, I did methylation testing and learned that I have a ton of uh, these um, 
mutations on certain genes that affect how my body can utilize mostly B vitamins. So if I'm taking, if I'm, if I'm deficient in certain B vitamins and I'm supplementing, um, that certain B vitamins aren't going to be useful at all. Like folic acid is not folate, but if you Google it, the government says it's folate, but it's not folate. It's not the same thing. Some people, I want to say probably like half of the population from what I've read or close to can't use folic acid as folate. And it actually blocks the absorption and use of folate when you take folic acid. So when you read like pasta, bread, chips, crackers, everything that's enriched in the United States is being pumped with this artificial folate or folic acid. And it's not not everyone can can even utilize that. So I've I've villainized folic acid in my mind. I I try to stay away from it, um, and then I'm very careful about like what supplements I'll take in relation to the methylation results. Um, and that was cool, Doctor Dave, because the methylation testing changed my thinking. That's when I realized that what's good for me might not be good for you. Like my husband doesn't do well with eggs. He gets sick when he eats eggs and his methylation testing explained why he gets sick when he eats eggs, but I do great eating eggs. So we have this once what makes me feel good should make you feel good, but our, our bodies are different and these different mutations, I guess, show that. So that was an interesting I guess, change in thought for me because I'm, I'm a little rigid. So that, that was good for me. I mean, I think that's probably one reason why some people claim, claim they, they can thrive on a vegan diet where I tried that. I, I was vegan for seven years and I, I think it almost killed me. So you're right. I mean, everybody's different and there's no, there's no one size fits all for everyone. That's, that's impossible. I followed your journey in that. And I just so applaud you for, for staying so open-minded because I know how deeply you were connected in that and, and how hard that must've been to go, wait a minute, something isn't right here. And I have to make a change. That's gotta be hard. It was difficult on that level. And also, uh, I, I lost a lot of friends in the vegan community because they said, you're no longer, you're no longer a part of us. You you're eating animals and you're, you're a murderer and things like that. And I, I got all kinds of pushback, but you know, some people just don't understand. And they think that they think that everybody should do a certain thing. And if you don't do it, if you're not on our side, you know, we hate, and, and we could extend that to even what's going on now in the political climate. If you did, if you didn't vote for my candidate, we won't go there. But if you didn't vote for my candidate, I hate you. you get out of here. I mean, it's it's grace. It's crazy out there. But we we the bottom line is we have to do what's what's best for our bodies, and everybody is different. Right. Exactly. Um, and the last, I'd say the last thing I wanted to mention too that I added is cold water immersion. And um, that's been really cool because I feel happier when I do that. Two to three minutes in cold water. I always say like two minutes at the beginning of my day, two minutes for a great day. And it's so easy. It's so passive. I mean, it's not easy, but it's easy. You know, um, you just do it. You just do well, it. And then me, you feel good. Tell, tell me a little more about the cold water immersion, because I I've got to tell you, I've never done it. Of course, I've heard of it. Of course, I know about it. Of course, I know that it's got incredible you know, health benefits. I was just speaking to somebody. It was, it, I swear it was like one to two weeks ago. And this person is a big fan of cold water immersion. And I told this person that I've never done it. And, and she said, what? What do, you, what do you mean you've never done it? You've, you've never done it. I said, well, I'm kind of scared of it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm afraid like my heart's going to stop beating if I get into this, like this ice bath. Like, so tell us a little more about that. So first I recommend trying it at a spa. That was my first experience was at a really nice spa. And you don't have to go into water that's near freezing. You can go into, I think ours is at like 45 or something like that. Um, it might even be, 
I don't know. Cold is cold. You just need to get that reaction in your body. And you need to have that little shivery reaction. And the really interesting thing that happens is you get in, your body goes into fight or flight, like your body thinks it's dying. And then your body adjusts. And then it doesn't hurt anymore. And then after about the three minute mark, it it, it doesn't really hurt. It's like the, the majority of the pain dissipates within the first 30 to 60 seconds. And then it's just an exercise of just being, you know, breathing, being. Um, and so, then so you're- talk about, um, yeah. I'm sorry, but, um, but you say, you use the word pain a couple of times. So you get into this cold water immersion bath and do you feel like, is it like actual pain you're feeling? What, what are you feeling for the first few minutes then? Well, I think it's fun to imagine that I'm not cold. And I think it's fun to like use mind over, over matter. So it's kind of like a, a fun challenge for me when I get in there to override my body's reaction and like fear response with my intentional thought. So there's an aspect of it that's kind of a fun challenge for me. But yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like if you just get into cold water, you're you're not comfortable you know, so you want to get out and warm up because we're, we're used to being comfortable and, and running towards comfort, but this is an intentional discomfort to start your day. And what it does is I think it really, um, pushes circulation through your body. And for me, it's a couple minutes of, uh, prayer. I actually listen to the mass readings for the day while I'm in there freezing. I'm like, I'm like in there with God. It's like a couple minutes of just calm. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not comfortable, but then you, I go through these phases where I don't go in. I'll be like, yeah, I'll go tomorrow. And then I'll get kind of like off the wagon. And I start to notice that my, I, I get more snappy at people. I'm less, I don't know how to explain it, but it, I think it's phenomenal for mental health. I just feel really, um, really happy, very positive. I, I don't know why. I don't understand how scaring my body into death every morning makes me feel happy. I don't get it, but it does. So out of all the things you've mentioned and you've done, you've done a lot of things, a lot of different things. Would you, would you say that the cold war immersion is perhaps the, if somebody wanted to start with like one thing, I just want to, I'm going to do one thing tomorrow to start to change my life. Would you say that cold water immersion would be the thing to start with? And maybe perhaps that's the most powerful out of everything you spoke about. I would actually say it would be eating meat. Oh, I would say it would be eating fat, eating the fatty meat, eating, eat burgers and ribeyes, like eat, fatty meat. We've, it's been villainized. We've been taught that it's not good. We've been taught that it's wrong, but if you have autoimmune conditions, if you have these issues, um, what we're putting into our body, I think has just a huge, huge impact on how we operate. Um, so I would say carnivore is probably the biggest thing. Um, but I definitely recommend cold water immersion and everyone can take a cold shower. It's not, it's actually harder for me to take a cold shower than to get into the cold plunge, but, um, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. So maybe those two, maybe carnivore and cold water immersion could be, the, could be the two most powerful things. Yeah. Done. And also, you know, the, the thought process many years ago, of course, was, you, you know, the more the more meat and the more fat you eat, well, that's going to raise your blood cholesterol and all that goes along with that. That's been proven absolutely not to be true. In fact, they, I, I've read and researched so much about meat and fat, and I agree with you, Grace. It, I think it's really healthy, and it does not it does not raise your cholesterol or cause heart disease. It, 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 it probably does the opposite. It's the opposite of what we used to think many years ago. It's, it's the sugar, mm -hmm. it's the additives, it's the chemicals. Um, but it's that refined sugar. I think that's making us really sick. Um, and one last thing to mention at the same time of going through all of this, I had learned that my daughter 
has an extreme sensitivity to artificial dyes. And that's an, that's a whole episode in and of itself. Um, but I can tell if at school she ate a piece of candy. I can tell that night, what did you eat? It It is so directly connected to her emotional state that it's it's wild. Well, we've got a lot more to talk about. This I think this is just the beginning because it's really fascinating. I applaud you for what you've done because you've taken, you know, you've had some real some very serious health issues and it sounds to me like you've you've totally been able to turn them around and and congratulations on that. And let's let's definitely get you back and explore this a little bit deeper if you like grace and and um I love it. I would love it too. And, and any um, last words you want to share with with everyone here? What, you had, anything you want to say is fine. And then we can then yeah. we can go ahead and close it. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, uh, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. I say, let meat be thy food and let plants be thy medicine. So I see it a little bit different, um, but it all starts with diet. Wow. Wonderful. Grace, thank you so much for taking your time. Grace, Riza, mom, business owner. Thank you for sharing your story. We'll, we'll get you back on really soon to, to explore even a little bit deeper. Thank you. So thank you so much for being with me. I am Dr. Dave. Remember brand new episode every Wednesday and Friday. If you like this material, make sure you subscribe, enable notifications, and share it with a friend or a loved one who could use this type of material as well. Until next time, again, Dr. Dave, I love you, and I will talk to you soon.